You are now entering the Nintendo Power Zone. Now you're podcasting with power. Welcome to Nintendo Power Zone, guys. It's your boy, Max1983, and we are going to do another breakdown video. As you guys should know, earlier today they did the Nintendo Direct for ARMS, and I am super excited to talk about it. I want to talk about all the things they showed off and a couple things that they didn't show off for ARMS specifically. Uh, they also showed a Splatoon 2 trailer, and we want to talk about that and the crazy little theory that I have based on a little piece of artwork that they showed at the end. Oh, that's the Platoon 2 trailer. So, lots to talk about. Let's go ahead and start with ARMS, and we're going to start with combat customization. After selecting your character, players will have the opportunity to equip two arms, one on the right and one on the left. These arms range from standard fists to things like boomerangs and missiles, offering a wide variety of close and long-range attacks as well as offensive and defensive options. So, we start with types. Dozens of arms can be selected in the game, each with its own special power and handling ability. Different types range from the toaster, which releases a flaming punch, to the tri-bolt, which shoots three bolts horizontally. Some arms even boost defense, like the guardian, which can be used as a shield. So they show this off in the trailer, and it was really awesome the way they did. Uh, they basically equipped it on the characters. My favorite was uh, was on Helix, where on one hand he had like the blob, and the other hand he had a guardian. So he was blocking, and then he threw a punch over the fist he was blocking with, and smack the other fighter. That was a very cool moment. Moving on to attributes. There are seven different arms attributes in the game, each with its own specialty. Fire, electricity, wind, ice, stun, explosion, and blind. Different arms have different attributes. It's a good idea to mix and match for strategic advantages. This was also really cool. Again, with Helix, they show when he had that blobby arm, he punched somebody, and just like a blooper in Mario Kart 8, it will blind your character. It basically puts a pile of ink on the screen so that you can't completely see what is happening around you. They did a very good job of showcasing that specific one, and I think that might be my favorite. Nothing better than having that kind of advantage in a fighting game where only you can see what's going on. I think that might be something I personally put to the test. And then they talked about weight. When equipping the many different types of arms, weight is an important factor in determining performance. Weight affects momentum, so the players have to keep this in mind when selecting arms. Stronger arms are more powerful but slower, while multi-hit arms are quick but have lower individual power. Punches can even run into each other while they are fighting, with heavier arms knocking the lighter ones away. But, what they're not saying here, but they did say in the trailer, if you have two arms of equal weight, they can actually be used to offset each other. So if I'm using the toaster arm, and Mario After Party is using the toaster arm, he throws that punch. And I throw a punch, and they collide. They just neutralize each other. It is very cool the way that they put so much thought into this process. It's, there is a lot of deep uh, mechanics in this game that aren't present in other fighting games, not to this extent. So right now you have to factor in the type of weapons you're using, the attributes to the weapon, and the weapons themselves based on their weight. So they're going to be able to do lots of different things that we've never seen before in a fighting game. It's going to be very cool. And finally, guys, you have the ability to upgrade arms. As players fight through arms, they will rack up hard-earned in-game currency for use at the arms getter, where players can use their skills to earn new arms and the ability to upgrade previously owned ones. So what they did say here was very cool, is that if you get duplicate, you know, arms, you're going to see the second one with a plus symbol by it, and that basically means it's going to have extra attack power. They didn't say how, whether or not that's going to affect, you know, the the weight or the attributes. Um, I hope not, because once you get used to a specific type of weapon, and that's the set you like to use a lot, you don't want those little things like the weight changing or the attribute changing, especially if you like the specific attribute that that weapon holds. So that's very cool. After that, they went on to showcase all the uh, the different modes that are present in the game. Starting with versus mode. 
Arms is filled to the brim with fun modes that offer a variety of ways to challenge other fighters. So your first mode is fight. In this multiplayer mode, two fighters battle against each other one-on-one -on -one to claim victory. During the fight, bombs and other healing items drop in, adding some strategic options to the proceedings. So that was very cool how they showed that off. That mode kind of reminded me of Smash Bros with the items on. So very cool. You're going to see some items that can heal you and be used as weapons against your opponent and vice versa. That's very cool. Very Smash like. I like the way that they're incorporating, you know, other Nintendo fighters into this game a little bit. Moving on, you have Team Fight. In this mode, two players are attached by strings and must team up to battle another team of two. Attacks can hit allies, so watch out for friendly punches. This is a little bit chaotic because you can actually hurt your friends in this mode. And a lot of these arenas, they don't look huge. They look they look just like pretty standard size for this specific game. So you're going to be all over the place. You don't want to hit your friends, but that is so very much likely to happen. I can see me and my crew just yelling, yelling at each other so much because it's going to be a lot of chaos, and we typically don't work well together in doubles-type situations. <laughs> All right, moving on, we have V-Ball. Similar to volleyball, but much more awesome. V-Ball is a sport that involves knocking an explosive ball into the opponent's court. So this is exactly volleyball, except that you're smashing the living crap out of each other with an explosive ball. I thought this was really cool, but not as cool as the next one they showed off, Hoops. Grab opponents and shoot them into the net, or even dunk them for extra satisfaction in this hardcore game of arm-style basketball. This was my favorite mode that they showed off. You were literally dunking your opponent through a basketball hoop. I cannot wait for all the memes that are going to get done from right here, because I can already tell you, I'm going to take screenshots of me dunking my after party and screaming out, BOOM SHAKALAKA! Because that is the legitest thing I have seen in so long. This is a cool mode for a fighting game. One that I didn't know I needed, but now that I've seen it, I need this in my life. They did such a cool, cool job at this. And it, they made it look badass when they just showed people getting dunked through hoops. This brings getting dunked on a whole new meaning. Then they showed off the skill shot. Breaking as many targets as possible using the versatile powers of arms. So... There you go. It's literally just target practice. Good for getting people adjusted to the motion controls. So I personally don't know if I'll be using this mode a lot. This one is kind of like your standard. It's literally just target practice. It's kind of cool to see it here. We haven't seen it in Smash in a long time. But this isn't even as cool as the Smash version. So I don't know if I'm going to be using this. Then they showed off 1 on 100. Defeat 100 enemies in a row. One at a time in this progressive battle mode. Not a lot here. This is a gauntlet mode. Uh, hey, Legend of Zelda DLC. Look, gauntlet mode. Right here. Part of the standard package. We're not paying extra for it. Ha! <sighs> it is what it is. Arms test and training. In test mode, players can try out randomized arm combinations while training lets them practice a number of varied drills. So this is basically just teaching you how to play. All fighting games have these, so this is kind of standard fare for a fighting game. Moving on, you have your multiplayer options. So playing with friends either locally or online is easy when using one of the various multiplayer modes. So first off, we have Grand Prix. Win 10 straight matches in Grand Prix, and players will face a final opponent to be crowned the ARMS champion. This mode is played locally with one or two players. So this is basically your standard arcade mode. And it's very cool. You can be playing it with two players. This is something I see myself and Mario After Party doing very much. It just looks like a lot of fun. And hey, maybe my girl Drip and Ink will want to get down with me on the Grand Prix mode. So next we have Party Match. By connecting the Nintendo Switch console to the internet, players can battle with up to three other ARMS players at a time that are in the same lobby as them. One lobby can hold up to ten systems, but with up to two players per system, 20 players can potentially play together in the same lobby. So this is cool. You're basically going to have four-on-four four matches with a group of 20 people. That is a lot of people in a lobby. That could be really cool. I don't have 20 friends. Wish I did because I would love to, you know, do this mode and just see which person racks up the most wins. Moving on, we have the Big Daddy right here, ranked match. In this Time Honor Coliseum, players compete online in 1v1 battles. By winning a match, a player's rank goes up. 
while conversely, losing will make that rank go down. While waiting to play a ranked match online, players can participate in any other mode to pass the time and tighten up their skills. This is very cool, and it seems like you're going to be able to do stuff while you wait for an opponent. That is very awesome. Something that Smash has been doing for a little while now, but it's happening here in ARMS, so I like that. I just hope that the online lobby functions better than it does in Smash because it's it's kind of bad, you know? And huh, you guys know, if you've played Smash Online, the, the issues that that game has. Now, it's a lot better than it was on the Wii, but it's still not exactly where it needs to be, so I'm hoping that the online mode in ARMS is really up to par. I don't, I don't want this game to get lost in the shuffle because it has a bad online mode. And finally, we have local wireless mode. When playing in local wireless mode, up to eight players with eight separate systems in the same room can gather in in-game lobbies and battle up to three other players at a time, like in party match. Very cool. I'm digging this a lot. Lots of multiplayer options, and that's important for a fighting game, especially important for a fighting game, if I'm being honest. All right, guys, so moving on to a feature that I'm extraordinarily excited about. We have ARMS Update. In the future, Nintendo released free software updates that adds new fighters, stages, and arms to the game. These free updates will occur after the game launches, so watch out for additional details. So I love this. I have been saying for a while now that arms reminds me of the original Splatoon game. It's a new IP with new characters that are just, you know, incredible to look at. They're incredibly designed, and I think the game has, like, the same like visual styles that make Splatoon look incredible. But they're taking it a step further by going into the Splatoon DLC route. Splatoon did so much DLC through the course of its life, and they and it was all free. That's, that was the biggest part. That was what's so important to Splatoon, that free DLC. It made that game so complete, and I love that. It just really changed that game, and they're doing it here. And I am really hoping to see a bevy of new fighters. They gave us 10 total at the end of this uh, direct. Uh, and to see more characters, that would be incredible. And please, Nintendo, please don't miss out on the opportunity to add Little Mac to this game. you got to make it happen. If you're not going to release a Punch-Out game, you got to throw Little Mac into the arms universe. You don't even have to give him weird arms. Just give him, like, super stretch arm strong arms or something. Please make that happen. Don't miss this opportunity. Little Mac already fit really well in a boxing game. you got to toss him in here. I would love to see Little Mac versus Spring Man. Oh, you guys know you're thinking the same thing. Don't even act like you're not because I know you are. We're all thinking the same thing. Add Little Mac to arms. It's got to happen. And also following in Splatoon's lead, the Global Test Punch. This is exactly like the Global Test Fire. Like Splatoon 2 and Splatoon before, ARMS is offering free trial periods to try out the game and get a taste of what it's like before launch. But instead of a global test fire, these free demos will naturally be called Global Test Punch. The first blocks of times will be allocated throughout the weekend of May 26th through 28th, the second block on June 2nd through 4th. To participate, simply download the free Global Test Punch demo in the Nintendo eShop on Nintendo Switch before the trial begins. Literally, a test fire, but they're not calling it a test fire. Who cares what they call it? We're all going to get to play Splatoon online with each other, and I am so excited. I think we all knew this was coming. I know Mario after party and myself, we discussed this a little bit, uh, but we didn't get a, we didn't get really in depth with it. This is the perfect way to showcase arms. It really is. They needed this, and I love the fact that they're doing it, especially since. You know, not very many people have actually gotten to play this game. And unlike Splatoon, I don't think this game has the same hype level that Splatoon had. Now, I know Nintendo's been really marketing the game so that it could get a push, but I don't think people quite really get it yet. I think they're scared of the motion controls. We'll have to see what this test fire allows for. But I am super excited. All right, guys, finally we have characters. Over the course of the Nintendo Direct presentation, the 10 key playable fighters in arms were unveiled. Each with his or her own fighting style. The game's playable characters are full of personality. So we got three new ones today. Three. And I love them. So we had Kid Cobra, a fan of selfie sticks and live streaming. This hip fighter pounces on opponents with a charged up dash. Now Kid Cobra is 
awesome. He is my favorite character. He is a snake. He's a freaking snake, and he moves so awesome. And his stage, his stage was awesome because it's like you're fighting on like these tops, and it just looks so epic. This was the part of the presentation that I was probably flipping shit. It was so cool to see Kid Cobra move. And then you had Bite and Bark. These are two fighters in one. This robot fighter and his robot canine companion battle together to unleash devastating combo attacks. This character seems cheap to me because you have no direct control over the little sidekick character and he's basically throwing punches at, at your opponent. This is cheap. I kind of think this character is going to be really popular online because he's going to help you fight. It's, I think he's cheap. I don't like him. So I'm going to have to get good to mess up anybody who plays as this character. And finally, we have Twintail. As an A-list actress, Twintel uses her celebrity status to render her opponents utterly starstruck as she walks the red carpet to victory. Now, Twintel is cool. She has these two, instead of arms, she actually fights with her hair. This Medusa chick over here, she's something else. And when I saw her, I immediately had Street Fighter vibes. She looks like a character that would fit so well in the Street Fighter universe. She's exaggerated. She's sexy. They, they did her right, man. And I just love the fact that she's attacking with hair. Very cool character. I loved the three new characters they unveiled today, minus Bite and Bark. Those two, like I said, they're cheap. I don't want to see them online. <laughs> all right, so that pretty much covers all of the arm stuff today. But I want to talk about something they didn't show. I was fully expecting to see arms amiibos during this presentation, and they didn't show off any. I at least expected a Spring Man or Raven Girl. These characters are completely awesome. They're really well designed, and they're basically made with Amiibo in mind, and yet there's no Amiibo for this game. I don't know why. I think the only reason I can think why is they're not confident in the potential of ARMS to go ahead and release an Amiibo set, which is sad because, think about it, they were even they were less confident with Splatoon Splatoon didn't get this much of a marketing push when they were when they were releasing that in 2014 or 2015. So I'm really shocked to see this game not getting arms, at least of you know Spring Man or Ribbon Girl. It is a missed opportunity. I would have bought these in a heartbeat had they announced them. I guess it is what it is. All right, guys. So let's go ahead and move on to that Splatoon 2 trailer. So the trailer was really focused, and it was focused on the Splatoon 2 single player mode. So let's go ahead and read Nintendo's official description for this. At the end of the Nintendo Direct presentation, a new trailer for Splatoon 2 debuted showing off the game's single player mode. In a shocking twist, Callie of Squid Sisters fame has gone missing, and her right tentacle squid Marie tasked the player to search for Callie and the great Zapfish. Players can use different weapons in single player mode to overcome obstacles, defeat enemies, and take down towering bosses. Weapons like the Roller, Slosher, Splatling, or the new Dooleys the single player mode is designed to teach players tips and tricks that they can use in multiplayer. For more on the Squid Sisters, check out the Squid Sisters stories, and then they provide you with the link. So, very cool. In the original Splatoon single player mode, you didn't have a lot of weapon options. You basically just had the, you know, the one gun, unless you bought the Amiibo and you played with the Amiibo, uh, the, the extra Amiibo missions, which allowed you to use, you know, the Splat Roller, and the uh, the Splat Charger. Here you're going to get to use all the weapons. This is very cool. Now, I love the single player mode. It was so awesome. I think my favorite part of the trailer, though, was watching the player grind on the ink rails like they were a skater. I That blew my mind. I freaked out when I saw that. That is very, very cool. They did an excellent job of showcasing the single player mode. And not only that, but all the things that they showed during that single player trailer, it looks like single player mode is 10 times better than it was in the original game. Now, I loved the single player mode, but I didn't think it was 100% essential. And this time it looks way more fun. It looks essential. And it looks like something I am going to be playing right away. I, don't, I might even play the single player mode before I go online, which is something I didn't do when I played the original Splatoon. I went straight online with that game. But I'm definitely going to get down on this single player mode. Alright guys, 
So I actually have a theory that I want to talk about while we're talking about Splatoon 2. So they showed off this awesome picture at the end of the Splatoon 2 trailer. And in this picture, you have Marie, the agent, I guess, for. And they scroll up, you see, you see the Octarians. Then you see what could possibly be Evil Callie. She looks like the Callie with the long hair. With these like very sharp and sinister looking glasses. Is Callie responsible for the stealing of the great zapfish? Also, they didn't talk about this during the, during the direct, but here in this press release, they actually talked about that they the great zapfish has been stolen yet again. Which what the hell guys? <laughs> Why can't we put this thing in a place where it's safe? But still. Is Callie responsible for the stealing of the great zapfish? I don't know. Guess we're going to have to keep paying attention to the Squid Sister stories to find out. Uh, now, finally, guys, something that they didn't talk about in the Direct itself, at least not the American Direct, but they talked about, I guess, in the European and the Japanese Direct. Splatoon 2 is getting a bundle. Here in America, it's going to get a, a bundle with the red and blue neon Joy-Cons uh, in Japan, though, they're getting the new pink and green Joy-Cons, which is kind of a bummer because, man, you can't get anything for free from uh, Nintendo right now, huh, guys? Having to pay more for pink and green Joy-Cons is a total bummer. These things cost 80 bucks as a set. I can see a lot of people are about to be really angry about this. It's, it sucks that we're getting a red and blue neon bundle. And Japan is getting the pink and green. I'm not a huge fan of that. The pink and greens will not come out until autumn. So that's kind of a bummer. Moving on, they also went ahead and shut off a new Pro Controller. And if I had known about this Pro Controller, I would have waited. Because this new Pro Controller is awesome. Pink and green with this amazing design on the face of the Pro Controller. And it kills me. And now I have to go ahead and drop another 70 bucks on a new Pro Controller because I need this one in my life. They did an amazing job with the design on this. They also showed off a Splatoon 2 carrying case. All of this is awesome, and it's going to break your wallet, guys. Just know that now. If you want all of this cool stuff, it's going to break your wallet, and you'll probably buy all this stuff with a smile on your face because I know I'm going to. It sucks, but I'm going to buy this with a smile on my face because I want that Pro Controller. That is the coolest controller variation I have seen from Nintendo in a long time. It's cool to have a red and blue uh, Joy-Con Switch, and it's cool to have the extra red and blue Joy-Cons, but this Pro Controller, I need this in my life. They did an amazing job on this Pro Controller, and I want it. But all right, guys, I think that is all of the information that was talked about and shown off during the ARMS presentation. It was a whole lot to take in, but it was... It was a relatively short direct, clocking in at about 25 minutes. They they did a really good job of showcasing all the things we we should be expecting, and now they don't have to spend any time on ARMS at E3. They can go ahead and focus on whatever games they're bringing. They can spend more time on games like Super Mario Odyssey. Hopefully we start to see some of the games that Mario After Party and myself discussed during our E3 prediction episode. So, very cool. There was a whole lot here. Guys, what was your favorite part about all of this direct? Was it the Splatoon trailer? Was it the new characters? All the cool like modes and arms and the new characters? Oh my god, man, there was just so much to digest. But I want to know what was your favorite part. Go ahead, hit me up here in the comment section, guys. And remember that if you do, the two best answers are going to get the prize packs. Again, you're going to get a full set of the Super Mario Happy Meals. You're going to get a light up Legend of Zelda necklace and a light up Super Mario Bros. necklace. Very cool. Guys, don't forget to go ahead and comment. And if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button, guys. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please, please go ahead and subscribe to the Nintendo Power Zone. We have so much stuff going on here. We have the unboxing videos. We have the podcast. We have breakdown videos. We have live reaction videos. We do everything for you guys because we love doing this stuff and we love when you interact with us. So go ahead and you can hit us up. If you're a fan of the Nintendo Power Zone podcast, guys, download new episodes on iTunes, Google Play Music, and stream new episodes on Stitcher Radio. You can hit me up on Twitter at Nice1983 or 
at Empower Them. Guys, that's going to be it for this breakdown episode. Thank you so much for watching, listening. Stay fresh. Peace. <laughs>